good day to everyone. Uh, while I was driving here, uh, I was thinking about uh, how blessed you are. Uh, because today I will speak uh, in front of you from the perspective of the uh, farmer and agronomist who is facing with many challenges in uh, neighboring country, uh, Serbia. Uh, and uh, you will see, uh, despite how hard it can be to, 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 to do um, at last agriculture, not to talk about um, precision agriculture and no-till, you will see that uh, we are capable to fight. Uh, my presentation is about Brazilian method, transition to regenerative agriculture in Serbia and our experience. And you will pay attention to this mushroom and probably ask yourself how is, how is possible to have mushroom in one of the driest region in Europe. Because from my farm, 15 kilometers, is the only desert in Europe called Delibratska Peschera on Serbian. So, I will start with this. Uh, the big seven answers meets and comments. Uh, probably you will, uh, you will see that uh, and you will recognize that uh, your friends, uh, neighboring uh, farmers will ask you these questions and usually ask these kind of questions. When you, when you start working something new, people are start starting to comment. And one of the comments we receive in, Ser in Serbia, we'll filter these, these comments. And one of the comment is that it is not possible to do anything else than plugging in Serbia and Europe since plug kill weeds, conserve moisture and makes my soil soft. This is the first meat or comment. I will show you that this is not the true. The second is what I often receive from uh, uh, my friends and farmers. You want to say that my grand-grand-grandfather wasn't right, that he, when he killed, uh, uh, burn his field and kill insect, not a chance, he won't change anything in his practice. The third thing is what I am saying when I am speaking about regenerative agriculture and uh, agriculture at all, precision agriculture, they think that I am working for pesticide industry and uh, that I just want to sell machines, which is, of course, a myth. It's not true. Uh, you usually receive the comments from farmers that uh, we can't compare Brazilian agriculture with, uh, with European since they are using GMO and have a lot of rain, which is, which is also a, a big meat, definitely. If I see any other plant except a plant I grow, uh, I will consider these plants as a must-kill weed. And this is the, the barrier from our farmers because when they sow a uh, multi-species cover crop in our field, they think that we are crazy. Why we are doing uh, multi-species uh, with, with one cu culture uh, uh, which is uh, a profitable cash crop. I don't want to fix my soul because this is something our state shall do. Uh, unfortunately, in Serbia, people expect, um, some farmers expect that uh, our state should do business and uh, sh uh, should uh, regenerate their soul uh, instead of them, which is very, very wrong and a big, big meat. And the same, the seven, don't compare us with European farmers since they receive hundreds of euros per each hectare while we don't. This is probably the true because uh, Serbia is one, probably the only country in Europe which we don't receive nothing, uh, even one euro per hectare like uh, subsidy. So in these conditions, we must fight. We must fight with meats. We must fight with uh, barriers, we must fight with climate, uh, we must fight with uh, mindset, which is probably the most important part. So let's see what, what is happening. Back to 2014, when we start doing and uh, transitioning to, to, to no-till, I start asking myself how to integrate Brazilian regenerative agriculture in Serbia. Why? Because we notice that we need to start start destroying our soils. With an intensive tillage, we notice our soils is, was become weak. We are facing issues with water management, which is, which is very important. And there are some predictions that in the next 15 years or 12, 12 years, uh, there is an expectation that Serbia will become the driest country in Europe. We could try to integrate re regenerative agriculture in our system, but in Brazilian way, especially domesticated for Serbian fields. Um, probably today I will speak, uh, if I exclude uh, uh, farmers from uh, Hungary, 
I will speak as your neighbors and I'm uh, probably the most close farmer who will, uh, who will speak to you and we have, because we have similar condition, more or less, right? How? We need machines. This was, we start asking ourselves uh, how much money we need to invest in this technology. Is it uh, 100,000 euro, 200,000 euro or much more? Planter, drill, roller, strip till, liquid fertilizer and etc. When? We started autumn 2014 and now you will see how we go through this transition. So first of all, I want to thank, uh, thank to uh, this man, uh, Mr. Rogero Pacheco, uh, who influenced me a lot. Uh, I saw uh, from his fields, I visited him twice in Brazil and I saw what he is doing with his fields. This guy produced around seven tons of soybean each year in uh, no-till mm -hmm. and he implemented, which is, which is very important, uh, he implemented precision agriculture. So today I will speak with you uh, from the perspective of a farmer who is integrating precision agriculture into regenerative agi, right? So there are seven principles of Mr. Pacheco. First of all is avoid er erosion, ensure permanent ground cover, implement crop rotation and biodiversity, store water in the soil, recycle nutrients, create life in the soil and do not mix the soil. Those are seven basic principles we try to implement in Serbia. So this is when we speak about erosion uh, in Serbia. We, from uh, 365 days, we in our in our city, we have uh, 330 days windy days. When I say windy days, I mean really windy days, uh, because uh, for us, uh, 60 kilometers per hour wind, uh, it's nothing. So you can imagine how, how windy is in our region. So uh, we did some measurements and uh, got the result that um, uh, probably five to 10 tons of uh, uh, topsoil air is going every year to the neighboring uh, fields. Second, ensure permanent ground cover. Uh, if, I, if I tell you that we have just 450 millimeters of rain per year, it is very hard to ensure permanent ground cover and to, to have uh, uh, a cash crop. But this was a big challenge for us and I believe that we, we succeed with that. The third thing is implement crop rotation and biodiversity. So we, are, we started our no-till with one crop, now we are going into five different species at one time. Store water in the soil. We have a big problem with, with water, with uh, lack of rain and we want we must protect our soils we must we must store water in the soil and i will show how we how we do this recycle nutrients of course we want to speed these uh, these processes in the soil and uh, that is the way how how we plan to to increase the humus and uh, all the trace elements and uh, the basic macro elements create life in the soil uh, all these biology is very important for us we notice that and we, we got some improvements in our fields uh, after two or three years. And the, the seven principles, we don't mix the soil. For five years, I didn't do nothing which can mix my soil on my fields. That means really nothing. What is the important thing? Uh, for us, the big challenge was how to implement technology because without technology, we will not be able to, uh, to face with uh, uh, regenerative agriculture, with no-till, and especially with precision agriculture. Because we, we conclude that the, the big challenge is to implement precision agriculture and decision agriculture in the system. So, no-till planters are powerful planters, which can do almost in, in every biomass. When I say every, that means uh, 15, 20, 25 tons of biomass, it can put the seeds, open the furrow, put the seeds, put fertilizer deep inside, below the seeds, close the furrow, and you will, don't notice, you, will, you will not be capable to see that where, where, is, where is planted. This is very important. Uh, we call this invisible planting. This is the, the planter we use on our field. And I want to show you what is the, our technology. We have these big discs, we have this shank, and we have this uh, closing, closing disc, right? So the point is, this big 
disk we will open the and crush the the, the biomass 55 centimeters it will open the biomass and open the furrow this sh shank will um, will do the slow tillage two three centimeters and put fertilizer deep below the seed and this system will close the furrow so this unit is unit for invisible planting this is very important uh, due to evaporation management we need to implement in our in our country when we speak about technology we must uh, think about no-till drills really no-till drills uh, brazilian which can do put the fertilizer put the seeds open the furrow close the furrow and don't mix the soil with with straw material so that means that we left 100 percent of biomass on the field all the time uh, since uh, i'm working on very very hard soil clay soil with uh, uh, very high cic uh, um, uh, uh, cation exchange capacity with very high uh, EC if uh, someone from you, uh, you are doing a mapping where is mapping for example we have very high C, uh, EC coefficient that means that we have a lot of salts uh, we need to do proper management of our salts so uh, we figure out the technology how we are going to to uh, load our pH and put the salts down into the subsoil and this is what we are doing with this machine. This is a, a valuable rate uh, liming machine. When we speak about technology, uh, the main uh, uh, concern, concernings of us was when we plant, uh, we usually wait harvest. But what is happening in the middle of the season is very important. I want to have an option to react every time. That means that I need to have specific machine uh, to make a decision and to to uh, to act any time in the field whenever corn is uh, 50 centimeters or 2.5 meters that means that we have this machine which can the only one in the world which can do four function in one machine on one chassis that means this machine can do variable spraying variable spreading of uh, granular fertilizers, interseeding, which is a very important part of our management because I want to enter my field end of August when my corn is 2.5 meters and I want to interseed ryegrass, peas and so on, so on. Just to think about that, what is the technology today? And of course, with this machine we can do mapping nitrogen, weeds, health conditions and height. <laughs> I told on the beginning of my presentation that we are implementing precision agriculture in no-till. So with this package of technology, we are capable to solve problems on our fields almost every, every day. No matter if you plant or later in the stage, uh, reproductive stage or before the harvest, we can act. And this is one of our principles, how we can work uh, successfully in no-till. Uh, let's speak about Serbia. So. We are somewhere here, right? Uh, we are located in this part. This is southern, southern Banat region, very close to uh, Romania border. So average precipitation in Serbia, 550 millimeters of rain per square meter. Average precipitation in my city, 450. 3.5 million hectares. You see, we are very big producer of corn, uh, wheat, soybean, sunflower. What you can see, we have Chernozem, degraded Chernozem and hard clay soil. Unfortunately, in my country, in my part of the country, uh, we are 90% uh, very, very clay soil, very clay, very hard soil to work. Summer temperatures up to 45, winter temperatures up to, up to minus, minus 15. What are the problems we are facing with in our technology? Climate, no rain, very hot summer very cold winter fertilizer management this is something in no-till when we want to implement this technology how to fertilize our our corn sunflower soybean uh, the, the 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 most question uh, i received from from the farmers how to do this management on on a proper way the third thing what we noticed here is placement and closing the furrow 
Uh, when I say this, the third thing, I, I graduated from probably one of the most expensive faculty in the world because uh, when I start doing uh, uh, strip till and no till, we call this transition to no till, I lost probably 100,000 euro in first year when I, because I make mistake. So I call this my mistake and I've graduated definitely from the most expensive faculty. This is the real time faculty. So we must find a way to close the furrow on heavy clay soil. This is what we are facing. When I say heavy clay soil, it's really heavy. You can just pass with the machine and it will, it will not close the furrow. Everything will be open. This is very important. I don't know if you fa you're facing here with, with these kind of uh, uh, questions, but this is a natural thing in, in my country, especially in my region. And of course, water availability, because uh, with uh, 450 liters, it's uh, really challenge to produce uh, two crops without irrigation system and with uh, 330 days uh, uh, strong wind. So I will show you now the pictures, what we did, how we decided to, to start working with, uh, with ryegrass. This is one of the field uh, where we had uh, corn and, so and, uh, and soybean. We had uh, ryegrass and just start working with simple uh, cover crops. This was our field in May 2018. We terminated these, these ryegrass and we did rolling. This was our management, very cheap management. By the way, we work around 100 hectares and uh, we work around uh, 800, 900, uh, not renting, contracting with just two tractors. I have two tractors worth probably 30,000 euros, 40,000 euros, and I'm doing 1,000 hectares. So this is important how I see management in agriculture and where are my fixed costs are. So labor costs, uh, pesticide costs and machinery costs. I can do this with one six rows machine. So very, very affordable for, for, for the people who, who think that uh, they need f five, 10 tractors and, and, and so on, so on. This is the termination. This is our field, test field, test plot. We have ryegrass here. 28th of April, we kill with, with glyphosate, we kill the, the ryegrass. 19th April, we kill the ryegrass with glyphosate. On this part, we will plant corn. On this part, we will plant soybean. This part, we will left for our test and for uh, creating the seeds. This planter, is a specific, uh, a specific planter domesticated for our market in order to work in huge biomass. As you can see here, it was around 15 centimeters of compressed biomass on that time. No chance for any weed. If I say that we didn't use any, f any pesticide, fungicide, nothing, all, just glyphosate to kill the ryegrass, and that was all. We call this invisible planting. This part here is around one centimeter open. It's very hard to see where it's planted. Here, we, we did tillage, put the seeds, place the fertilizer below the seed, five centimeters below the seed, and close the furrow. This is our corn when it emerged and how it was looked. You see, you can see neighbor, because neighbor, he planted uh, more than 30 days before us. He plowed the, the, the field and you can see how it was his uh, weeds are spreading on our field. We had visitors from, uh, from Hungary who came to, us, to our field to see what, what we are doing and we got a nice discussion about, about precision agriculture and, uh, and no till. You can see our field at end of May 2018. This is our corn, uh, first decade of June. No weeds, no spray. I almost don't need any, any sprayer for this type of technology. I don't use plugs. I just have one planter and one drill machine. You can see the row space. You can see the condition of my plant. 
I receive just 450 liters of rain per year. But what is the most important part is the fact that my ryegrass took 200 up to 220 millimeters of rain. So how much tons of corn I can produce with 230 millimeters of rain per year? Let's see. This is June, mid-June, and how my fields look like. You can see the root system, which is very, very good in geometry. That means that we didn't have this lateral compaction, or maybe it, it was over there, but it was not so strong. We measure our root system. Unfortunately, I don't have this kind of uh, photography here. It was more than 90 centimeters deep. This is in July. As you can see, the biomass is still here. Corn is more than 2.2 meters at this time. No weeds, uh, no sickness or uh, anything which, will, which can be correlated with, uh, with this technology. Because on that time, uh, probably hundreds of farmers claim that I'm not going to succeed in this because my plants will be sick because of uh, humidity and everything else. You remember this mushroom I spoke about. How is this possible? Or oh, alkaline soils to receive mushroom. Because you have a lot of moisture. This is my corn, 2.6 meters tall. The next is soybean, I will speak about that. This is also my corn, you can see. This is in August. From the 1st August, up to today, we received just 15 liters of rain. Last rain we received on 4th September, 10 liters. From 4th September up to today, 15 November, we did not receive not a, a drop of rain. This is very important to understand what will be our future management. Let's see now soybean. Uh, in this part of uh, Serbia, there is, uh, particularly in my micro, micro region, it's not possible to grow soybean. Nobody grows soybean. People usually grow corn, wheat, barley, and sunflower. Uh, just these guys who are probably crazy, they will grow so soybean here. So we started with that, and the first sign we are in the right way was this, the mushroom. We made mistake and I, I said, okay, I'm here. I don't want to, to pay twice uh, my faculty, very expensive faculty. So I tried this on just uh, two hectares. But what was the mistake? The mistake was that we put in two lines. You remember how it looks this machine for, for, uh, for planting. It has big, these discs, and we put it offset five centimeters. And it opened the, the furrow and put uh, fer fertilizer here, while the planting equipment wasn't able to, cr to crush, to open the, 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 the furrow and to plant soybean. I hope that you understand. This was our mistake. That is why we received just 50% of emerged soybean. How it looks in July 2018. You can see, no weeds. How it looks in August 2018. Very, very good. And this time, after this, this time, this was end of August. On this time, we didn't have rain for 20 days. How it looks like in September 2018, this soybean. You can see that there is still rye grass and cover crops. No wheat. We harvest corn, 8.6 tons. Uh, most of you will say this is, uh, this is bad result, but it's not quit. True, because uh, average yield in my region are seven to nine tons. Seven to nine tons. For example, Northern Bačka, close to uh, Subotica region, uh, are probably 13, 14 tons. But we are very low because of the rain of everything. So I produced with uh, 230, let's say 250 millimeters of rain per year, I produce 8.6 tons. My question is, what will happen if I received 200 liters more? 
probably it will be more than 12, 13 tons. This is just to, to think about what is the, the technology, what can, what can do for us. Next season, I mean this season, cover crop mix, peas, uh, heavy wedge, rye grass, we mix it, okay? We plant it into the biomass, very, very successful. It started emerging. On the day we planted, it was 22nd September, we didn't receive the rain for almost 15, 16 days. The last rain was around 10 liters of 4, 5 September. It emerged. Uh, if you go today on this field, you will see that only field emerged on nowadays, today, is this field. From 1,000 farmers from my region, there is one, there is more than 99% they didn't emerge, they didn't have nothing from their wheat because they till. They lost all the, the moisture and the question is how we, how we uh, preserve this moisture. But uh, I, I told you that we are facing with, with many problems and sometimes we must fight with uh, mindset. There is a dangerous behavior in Serbia which occur here. I work five years, collect millimeter per millimeter of uh, biomass and then comes my neighbor and burn my field, burn my cover crops, burn my cash crop. And he restart me and put me on the same beginning. And despite I didn't want to, to study twice, okay, I need to finish my second faculty because I realized that it's very hard for me to play in my country if I'm trying to do something and at the end somebody comes and burn my field. You can see here that everything what I created here with my family was burned and restarted. But it's not the end. I will show you at the end what, what will happen. I want to speak uh, and say what, what we need to do, what is necessary for this system. Uh, I believe two things. First, how to connect farmers, how to connect you with, with Serbian farmers, to, to learn them and to learn from each other what is good and what is not good. And the second is how to connect consultants. So we are all here today speak about agriculture, and so on, so on, but we need to understand and to learn from each other to, to connect. It is very important for the future, not only, not only for, for uh, uh, Hungary, but for, for Serbia, for all Europe and so on, so on. I say that agriculture is, uh, regenerative agriculture is a miracle, and I mean it. Regenerative agriculture is like a phoenix. Despite they burn my field, I invest five years of my work, uh, this was how it looks like in, the, in, in June. This was when, when they burned my field complete. I mean, they burned all of my fields, 100 hectares, just for you to understand. But I don't quit. Without a drop of rain, my cover crops is, let's say, how to use, uh, emerging twice, emerging again is like a resurrection, which is almost impossible. So I had a two emergence of my cover crops, of my system, while my neighbors, they don't have even at least one emergence. How much water I conserve in my, in my soil. This is uh, the most probably important thing we will face with in, in, in Serbia, uh, because we will become very dry region. Uh, with, uh, with a, a lack of rain and uh, we believe that the system uh, of regenerative agriculture including multi-species cover crops and uh, precision agriculture is a, a winning mix for, for our success. So I don't want to speak any more about that. Uh, if you have some questions I will answer but I want to say that Everything what we are doing, 
we are following on our channel. You can see Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. You can see Dr. Agro. You can follow us and see what we are going to do. I hope that uh, thanks to our partners, I am very thankful to them. I hope that we will soon have this option available on Hungarian language and English language. So this is what, what we want to do. We want to learn step by step and to show the farmers what to do and what, uh, what not to do, let's say, in this way. So uh, the, the main, uh, the main uh, message I want to send uh, is uh, never quit. We must be uh, persistent and we must be stubborn sometimes in order to succeed. So there are many challenges. If you think you have challenges, imagine what we had. Imagine that someone comes and after five years just burn everything what you do. So uh, thank you very much. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay.